Okay, this is the second part of practice test part one. We have two files for the practice test. This is the first file and this is the second video. In the first video we did sheet one and we're going to do the remaining sheets in this video. So um, let's start with these functions down here. This is the fun page for functions and uh, what we want here is we want uh, the sum of all of the numbers from here down to here. So that's the sum function and it is on the home tab and it is under auto sum and let's go ahead and select it now. Uh, it selects the numbers that are closest and it does get February but it misses January and March. So all you have to do is just drag the mouse over the area that you want and it should automatically change this to the correct range down here which it does and then you can hit the enter key when you're done. And the answer is 25,145. Okay, now uh, in the next cell, we want to determine the smallest value. That's going to be the min function. So let's go up here and choose min. And again, uh, it doesn't get the right numbers for us, but that's not a problem. We can just select those and hit enter when we're done. So 21 uh, right here is the smallest number on the list. Okay, and the next one is to find the largest. That's going to be the max function. Let's go and choose max from the list of functions up here. Again, we have to select our range, which is the same. Hit enter. 999 is the largest number. And the last thing we have to do is compute the average value. So let's put the cursor in E22. And let's go up here and let's choose average. And one last time, we have to select our data up here and hit enter and the average is 524. Okay, uh, in uh, H and I here uh, we're going to do some logical functions. Column H it says uh, put a formula that will cause the value true to appear if a salesman has reached a quota of 600 or more for any one of the three months. So any uh, means or. Uh, all down here means and. So we're going to be using the or function. What we want to know is, is this number 600 or greater, or is this number 600 or greater, or is this number 600 or greater? If any one of those three is, then we want the value true to appear here. So uh, that's going to be on our formulas tab, and it's a, in the logical group, and we want or. And logical test number one is, uh, I'm just going to click on the cell here, is that greater than or equal to 600. And logical test number two is, is this value E2 greater than or equal to 600? And logical test number three is, is column F March greater than or equal to 600? And one of those is, so the result of the entire expression, which is shown down here, uh, is true and click on OK and we get true for Washington and then we need to drag that down all the way for the other cells and almost everybody met the code at least once uh, this row right here uh, none of them are over 600 and right here they're close but none of them hit 600 so um, that takes care of that now we want to do uh, column I and here we want true only if all three values are 600 or more and and I'm sorry all means and so let's go up here and let's do the uh, and function and we need the same three values so the first one is is this greater than or equal to 600 and is February greater than or equal to 600 and the last one is March. Is that greater than or equal to 600? And uh, they all have to be true in order for the expression to be true. So the expression is false. And let's click on OK. And uh, let's drag this down and see how many people met their quota all three months. And it looks like the only person that did is this guy right here, Fillmore, uh, whose name never got capitalized. So that takes care of two of our logical functions. Now let's go on to DB, which stands for database. And uh, the database stuff we're doing on these three sheets is uh, just uh, sorting and filtering. And uh, we're going to do a sort 
on this sheet. It says sort the data in decreasing order by number of shares owned. So that would be uh, column C here. And uh, stocks with the same number of shares should be in alphabetical order by name. So here's the name over here. So if we're sorting on two columns, uh, we need to, let's go to our data tab here, which is where sorting and filtering is. Here's our sorting and filtering box. And if you just want to sort on one column, that's what these two buttons are for. But if you want to sort on more than one column, that's what this button is for. And uh, all you have to do is make sure the cursor is any place in the data before you start. Do not select the data before you start. It'll, it'll be easier if you just put the cursor in there. And it'll figure out that it goes as far up and down and left and right as it has to until it bumps into something that is blank, or in this case, bumps into the wall. So we want to do a sort on two columns. And the first one we want to sort on is we want to sort on the number of shares. And we want largest to smallest. We want descending order. And then we want to add a level. And if they have the same value for shares, then we want to sort by the name of the stock. And we want that to be in alphabetical order from A to Z. Click on OK. And there is our data. Uh, these are all 2,000. And if you look at the corresponding names, those are in alphabetical order, ACMU. Uh, we've only got two for 1,500. We've got quite a few here for 1,000, though. And if you take a look at those, uh, they are in alphabetical order. So uh, that is a two-column sort. Let's go to DB2. And it says create a filter that displays only those stocks that have a profit of 5,000 or more. Well, we're going to do an auto filter here, which is uh, clicking on the filter button. Um, the advanced filter is in the second file, second half of the test. So let's, uh, again, just put the cursor any place in the data. Do not select the data. Just put the cursor in the data and then click on filter. And we get our arrows, and uh, we want a profit of 5,000 or more. So here's our profit or loss column, and we want to do a, uh, it says use a rule, not the check boxes. And the reason for that is if you're doing numbers, you know, there could be a 1,000 different numbers here, and you don't want to check off every number. Uh, so the smart thing to do when you're uh, filtering on numbers is to make sure that you use a rule rather than checkbox. So on greater than or equal to because it said 5,000 or more. And we only need one rule. We don't need the other half. So we can just leave that blank and then click on OK. And we have, um, looks like we got six stocks. Actually, it tells you down here. It's got six of 29. And um, they're all 5,000 or more. And uh, we wouldn't have gotten that one if we had said greater than 5,000. Uh, so it's a good thing we said greater than or equal to. Now let's go to DB3. And this one is uh, asking us to do a filter that displays all stocks where the value in the category column is S or P. So here's my category column. It doesn't matter where I am when I click on the filter. So go to your uh, data tab up here. Uh, go to the sort and filter group and click on filter. And again, it'll put the drop down boxes in the column headings. And in the category column, we want S or P. So here's the category column. And what we're going to do here is we are going to turn off the selection and then turn on S and P and click on OK. And now if you look at everything over here, it tells you that uh, the only things we've got are, are S and P. Okay, the last thing we're going to do on this spreadsheet is, or this workbook, is we're going to do a chart. And we want a line chart of this data up here. Uh, it says that we want uh, the years in a legend, or uh, yeah, in a legend, no, I'm sorry, the years will be across the bottom uh, along the x-axis. The type will be a legend, so e and each one of these rows will be a line on our chart. So we want the stuff in column A, we want the stuff in row three. So we've got to do start in A3 and then work our way down and across, uh, basically selecting all the data except for the two title rows. And what we want for a uh, type of chart here. This is all charts are on the insert tab and we want a line chart and it says the subtype is line with markers and if you pause the mouse there uh, line with markers does come up. So select that and it uh, gives us our basic chart right there and we can um, so we've done a line chart, subtype is line with markers. We want years on the horizontal axis, and it did that for us. And we want a line for each of the five types of energies, and we've got that. So we've done all five of those, uh, uh, or four of those first things. Then it says move the uh, chart to another worksheet using the move chart button. And I'm going to save that until last, 
because uh, then I don't have to flip back and forth between the chart page and the instructions page. So uh, it says it should have a legend. Well, there's my legend right there. It automatically did that for us. Uh, set the title uh, to U.S. Energy Supply. Okay, so the easy way to do that is just click on it once and then start typing what you want for the title, U period. And it doesn't change here, but it appears up here on uh, the, the input line. And um, it's smart enough, uh, apparently, to realize that if we type uh, U period, uh, it must be looking up above the chart here to see if there's something like that that we'd like to put on the chart. And there is. So just go ahead and hit uh, enter. And uh, it automatically updates uh, the chart title for us. Uh, so now we're on this one. Set the vertical axis title the quadrillions of BTUs and to make my life a little bit easier again I'm just going to select that and do a control C to copy it to the clipboard and then I want to go over here on my chart and I want to tell it that I want to add something to the chart and what I want to add is an axis title I'm not going to I don't want all of them uh, I just want the uh, vertical okay and I'm going to click off of that now so I can select my title and then with that title selected I'm going to do a control V and uh, oh, that did not work. Let's do uh, Control Z to undo that. Let's put the cursor up here, and now do a Control V, and then hit Enter. And there we go. So we didn't have to type it; we just copied it from here. Uh, make the chart title font size 20 points. And the easy way to change font size is just select uh, whatever you want to change. Go to your Home tab, and just change the font size like you would for anything else. Okay, so now it's 20 points. And then we want basically all of the other text there to be. 14 points so first we select the numbers and we're going to make those 14 and we select our label and we're going to make that uh, 14 and we're going to select the labels on the bottom and we're going to make those 14 and we're also going to select uh, the legend we're going to make that 14 and this time we're going to use a shortcut uh, control y uh, will repeat the last instruction so i just typed a control y there um, rotate the numbers on the horizontal axis 45 degrees, either right or left, it doesn't care. So just click on this, and now we've got them selected. Now you can right-click, and what you want to do is uh, you want to format uh, the axis. And we'll get this uh, dialog box on the side here. And we've got four different options here, and sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out which one of these uh, you need. Well, it's not going to be uh, the paint bucket is just the fill and the line, and it's not going to be that, obviously. Uh, this is mostly special effects, and this is something you're probably not going to use in Excel very often. Uh, and then this one here um, is alignment, and check that out. There is a custom angle option, and I'm just going to bounce on the or hold down the up arrow button here until I get close to 45. And notice they have rotated over there on the side. Okay, now I want minor grid lines. I'm going to wait on that until we move it to another page because uh, with big text now it's really getting cluttered. Uh, format the numbers on the y-axis with zero decimal places. You know, we don't really need two decimal places for this stuff here. And I want to, you know, what I'd like to be able to do is just go to the Home tab and go up here, uh, but uh, those are grayed out. I can't do that. So what I'm going to have to do instead is uh, find something under formatting the axis here uh, that will let me change the number of decimal places. Okay, And it's not going to be the bucket. Uh, it's not going to be this one. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be this one either. Uh, let's click on this. And uh, it, we're not seeing everything here, so we have to scroll down a little bit. And uh, there is an option here for number, and that corresponds to this number group up here. We've got some of the same options there that we had up on, on the ribbon. So uh, click on number here, and again, you got to scroll because we're running out of room. And right now it says this is a custom format. And uh, so I don't want custom. Um, I probably want either general or number. I'll try general first, and uh, general takes care of the decimal places. So uh, the other one that you might want to try is number. And if I try number, uh, there's a little box here for decimal places. And I can just back up over the two and put a zero in there and hit enter. And as soon as I do, you see that the chart changes back to zero decimal places. And then I want to format the plot area with the preset gradient called light gradient accent one. And I think before I do that now, I think it might be time to move this to another worksheet. So uh, let's do a move chart. And we'll put it on a new sheet called Chart 1. 
and okay now I've got something that's a lot bigger and I want to do a preset gradient on the background here so right click and go to format plot area actually I think that was already there if if, if you got this box up and you start clicking on different places over here um, you know it will change the label and it'll change the options for you so I want to format the plot area which is everything basically uh, in the area where the lines are drawn and I don't want that so let's see what we've got over here and actually I do a gradient would fill in when it so let's click on fill and let's do gradient fill and it says do a preset one so here's a bunch of preset ones and uh, this one up here is light gradient accent one that's the one that I want so it starts off with a light color on the top and it gets a little more blue as you go down and now we have one remaining thing to do and the last thing we have to do is we have to get some uh, grid lines here and um, this one I think is a little bit tricky let's um, I'm gonna click on the grid lines here and, and it says format grade major grid lines uh, but I want minor grid lines and let me see if I scroll down here I don't see anything about minor grid lines if I click on this uh, I don't see anything about minor grid lines uh, so let's let's go over here and uh, let's try clicking on is it the numbers or is it the line yeah, I'm gonna try right clicking on the numbers and uh, there it is it says add minor grid lines and um, now if I right click on one of those minor grid lines and choose format grid lines um, it will tell me here now oh, where is that Uh, it does not tell me though. Let me try right clicking on one of the major grid lines and do format grid lines and see what I get now. And um, this one, oh, I guess I have to click here. Um, format major grid lines. Um, okay there's a place on here and I'm not finding it right now there's there's supposed to be an option under our grid line stuff let's do format access and uh, there it is it seems like it ought to be under grid lines but it's under access and here's where you can change the minor value okay um, so if you want to have it you know every two instead of every one uh, you can set it here and you can also set the major here and you can also set the minimum and maximum for your chart so we've got zero at the bottom and 30 up here at the top and sometimes it will give you values other than zero for the bottom but you really want to have zero on the bottom all the time so that uh, takes us to the end of this first file and uh, we will continue with another video on uh, practice test part two which is the second file for the practice test